it's working awesome thank you Jesus all right let's begin again hello church I am Destina Branham uh, Pastor Carter was unable to be here today he had a preaching engagement in Pennsylvania he's sorry he couldn't be here today Nathan is going to be preaching to y'all today on the armor of God and I will be giving a word as well we will be praying at the end of the recording we will take prayer requests as usual anyone that wants to be saved or if you have any suggestions or you have anybody you want to pray for just let us know we're just kind of winging it today he's Pastor Carter said to just go with it, so we're going to do the best that we can. So, as I said before, just bear with us. We'll do the best that we can possibly do here. First time, nervous, but we know the Holy Spirit's going to be with us, and we're going to get through this. Amen? All right, so we're going to go ahead and go into a word of prayer, and then we'll start over. We'll get it started this morning. All right? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Father, and we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, please be with us as we give your word today. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Let it touch those who need to hear it, Father. Give us strength through it all. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of healing, who need peace or comfort, Father. Lord, we pray for those who are in the path of those hurricanes, Father, that's coming through, Lord, we pray that you please put a hedge of protection around them, Father. Lord, I have people in my life right now who are dealing with cancer, Father, those who are very ill, Lord, and I pray, Father, that you just please lay a healing touch on them, Father. Give them strength. Heal them with your miraculous healing that you have, Father. Lord, just please be with them. Give their families peace and comfort. Be with the doctors as they do what they're supposed to do. Father, give them the wisdom that they need. And Lord, we ask that you be with everyone that we need. Please mute your phones, please. <laughs> Get that going. And Lord, please just be with us and get us through this sermon and this word today father and just help us through it all lord we pray these things in your precious name in jesus name we pray amen amen all right so this morning now we are note takers okay this being our first time, we're not used to just winging it. I mean, we rely on the Holy Spirit, of course, to help us through it. But we like to study ahead of time, take our notes, so that we don't stumble on our words because I'm very good at that. And my memory isn't the sharpest at my age anymore. So bear with me on that because I struggle sometimes. But we're still going to go on the same lines as what Pastor Carter's been teaching on as far as spiritual warfare. Because we all have it, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not a Christian, we all do. We all go through it each and every day. So I believe we're going to start with Nathan and let him go ahead and start preaching, doing his thing. And then I'll give a word afterwards, and we will go from there. So I would like to introduce my son, Nathan. He is 12 years old. He will give you a little introduction of himself, what he's into, and everything before he starts. And then we'll go from there. All right? Thank you all, and God bless. Get out of your view. You okay? Well, good morning. First time nervous, but um, we have Nicholas, my brother. We have Terry. 
We have Megan, Christiana, sorry. We have Ian and Wallace Caller and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, but um, what I usually do is mostly sit down and watch football, and that's my favorite thing. And I like spending time with my mom on Sabbath and doing Bible studies. And every Sunday we always get on here watching Pastor and... Like like she said earlier, with note takers, if y'all see me looking down, that's me looking at my notes. I'm not good at memorizing stuff, but first time, first day, nervous. Oh, uh, well, we'll go into the word of prayer, then we'll get started on the armor of God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you can watch over everyone that's online, Lord. Lord, I pray that you can watch over everyone who's sick, Lord. Please help their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so... The arm of God. Let's go to... Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Again, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, upon the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel and peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the, into the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all per, per, excuse me, perseverance. perseverance and supplication for all saints. Well, so this lesson is for us is that we need to go into all of our battles being strong, being wealthy, and prepared. God can and will use all tools if we have, if we are obedient and willing to follow the commands that he gives us all. We need to follow his commands that he gives us to all. That's saying, God will give every single in individual that, that is on this earth, he will give them a certain command. So... We are constantly in a battle against the evil. That's saying, Satan, he will always try to, let's say, you tr like this morning, we were trying to get ready for this, but the devil kept on attacking us, like headsets not working and computers not working. That's the devil trying to make sure we don't do this online church. The devil will always attack you. So, are weapons of such things as faith, knowing God's word, prayers, and obedience to God. The battle between good and evil are all around, are all around us constantly, 24-7. Satan never sleeps, never stops hindering us, so we must be prepared for the battle at every moment. We are to be alert 
to see and recognize evil when it comes. We need unfailing faith, energy, strength, and prepared heart to respond to the evil saying you will not take control. All of the resources that God gives us must be used daily in our Christian walk as weapons to fight against the evil we face every day. Also, one of the best weapons we have to protect us from the evils of the world is the Bible. Hebrews 4.12 this, It describes God's word as the sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Meaning, God's word penetrates our minds and hearts. That's saying you're sitting down, reading a Bible. You, let's say at first you never trust in the Lord. Then you're interested in the Bible. You, you start reading the Bible. It penetrates your heart. You're getting into it. So... Who we really are by revealing our faults and our sins. God's word has an ultimate cleansing power. Ultimate cleansing power to save us from our sins and redeeming power to mold us to be what he wants us to be. Okay, so in verses 10 through 18, there's these words like, Wilds, wiles. Wiles means schemes or temptations. Verse 11, 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, then vigilant, because your adversa adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. That's saying, Satan will find anyone he wants to devour. So, Principality, principalities means rulers, powers, authorities. So verse 12 of the Ephesians, well after verse 12 of Ephesians 3.10 says, To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church and manfold, manfold wisdom of God. So, in verses 16, 15 and 16, it's, it's saying, well, loins good. When it says, stand therefore having your loins good about with truth and having on the best plate of righteousness. Loins good about means... Waist belted, verse 14, before verse 10, Isaiah 11, 5 says, And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. So, if we go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's saying God's power is strong and it's on Satan's attacking you and God's power is so strong that Satan's attacking you. God can instantly stop him. That, so, so all you have to do is put on the armor of God, put on the helmet, Put on the breastplate, put the sword, the shield, put everything on. So, what I'm also going to say is, verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. That's saying, Satan is going to shoot all of his fiery darts, his words, Trying to go into your head. 
he's there behind you telling him that you're not good enough and well put on that shield of faith shield of faith ignore him block him block the fiery darts and it says in verse 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand that relates to verse 16 because in half of verse 13 it says wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that saying put on the whole armor of God which equals to the shield the helmet the sword the breastplate so it says here in verses 18 through 20 can go a little bit over, but it's okay. More verses, more learning. So it says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Tich, Tichicus, and beloved brother, and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. That's that's technically going back to verses 10 through 18 because it's like relating. It's like in a longer sentence almost, and it's relating back to the armor of God. So we have the sword. The sword is the words of God. In my opinion, I think that the words of God is the sword of you just speak the verses and the demons shut down. Because Satan hates the truth. He hates it. So, my opinion on all of this is... Once you put on the armor of God, that you're full of the Holy Spirit. So, if we have to say, for example, we're here out in a baseball game, and they're saying, just saying, oh, you're going to lose. No, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it. Put on the armor of God. Just... Put on the armor of God and rebuke him. And try everything you can to ignore him. Just ignore him. Follow God. Don't follow Satan. We're going to read verses 10 through 12 again. And what I, want, what I want you all to do is think about these verses. Think about what it's talking about. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. When it's a, like I was saying about the baseball game where he's saying you're not good enough, you're not going to make it, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's saying don't, don't fight back. Just ignore, just put on the armor of God. Don't fight back. I don't really know how to explain this, but. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what I'm saying is, God, he can, he can take saying out just like that. So you just, at the baseball game, just hold your bat, just ignore him, just do what you need to do, just put on the armor of God. But if Satan's there, in your head, trying to tell you you're not good enough, first thing you need to do is get that sword. The sword is the main, uh, the main weapon because, because the verses are the truth. Satan hates the truth. So that's why you need the sword first. 
because that's what would make him angry. So once you get him all angry, you put on the shield to block his fiery darts. Then the helmet and the bus plate. Put on that whole, the whole armor of God. And I'm going to go back to verse 15 of, excuse me, Isaiah 52, 7. It says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good things. That's saying, God will bring good things to you. Like, you're sick. You can't. Like you're just laying there in bed. You can't do anything because you're really sick. God will bring good things unto you later. He will make sure you're not sick. He'll come there. All you have to do is lay his hands on top of your head and you're healed. Now, my opinion on why Satan attacks us is what I'm getting out of the Bible, what I'm getting out from the sword is that God, what I'm getting out from this is, if we're doing something really bad, we go home, we ask for forgiveness. Then we go right back to it. And we come back and ask for forgiveness again when we do the same thing. No, God ain't, God ain't going to forgive you because you did it two times. You already asked for forgiveness, then you went back and did it again. So what you need to do is... Let's say you went back and there again. Put on the read, read your Bible. Just put on the whole armor of God. Try everything you can for forgiveness. Don't go back and do the same thing again. So, if if y'all may go to First Peter chapter five verse eight. Verse 8 through 10, I think. Yeah, verses 8. And it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adver excuse me, adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's saying, Satan, he, he's, he's the devil. And he's just walking around seeing who he can devour. That's saying he can go into your head like I was saying earlier. Go into your head saying, you're not good enough. You can't do this. So, going back to the story on um, where you do something again. Well, that's saying, well, we cannot will willfully sin and expect God to forgive us. So, what I'm saying here t today, this morning is, ignore Satan, ignore him, put on that whole armor of God, and y'all can, um, y'all can just Believe, put on the home of God, trust in Him, not Satan. Don't get, don't, don't get near Him. Don't get near Him. You want? Okay. Um, I was, I was doing these practices and on my brother's computer, and I was practicing all these recordings, and one of them, I did um, a 52-minute recording and there were these words that were said that I had no idea of what I said. So I I was there talking about God, talking about the armor of God. Satan is in my head making words come out of my mouth that I don't I had no idea what on what I said. So Satan got into that computer. He messed up the words. So, I think that's all I gotta say for today. Well, 
if y'all if y'all want to, y'all can join unmute y'all's mics and tell me what y'all think. Tell me if y'all need any player and me and my mom will be there. Hey, bud. Hey, Megan. You did an awesome job, and you look so sharp today. Thank you. <laughs> you did a great job, and, that, and you know that's my um, that is my favorite set of of passages all throughout Ephesians six. I'm so glad that that was what you chose to teach on today, and I just think that after hearing you speak. I have to agree with, with Pastor Leroy and your mama. You absolutely have a gift, bud. And, you know, a lot of people sometimes when we're younger, we forget sometimes that we're born on purpose and with for a purpose, right? Yes. And I can see that all over you, bud. You are going to be something very mighty for the kingdom. And I'm so glad your mom shared you with us <laughs> today because I can – I can say that um, her heart is probably beaming right now. Oh, yeah. She's probably got the biggest smile on her face right now. She does that her now. Son, love the Lord. Oh, honey, I, I, I have to, I'm going to have to just smile right with her because that was beautiful, bud. Uh, thank you, and God bless. God bless you, too. Does anyone else want to come on and... Need players? I'll say a word. <coughs> Thank you, I am. Do you want to say a prayer for um, Pastor Leroy and Jackie for safe travels? We can. Um... Well, I'm going to ask anyone on, do y'all want to do the player? Ian, Megan, Terry, anyone? I think we want to hear you do it, buddy. <laughs> no pressure, though. <laughs> uh, let's go into player. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you watch over Pastor Leroy. And Miss Jackie, Lord, just watch over them with their travels. And I think they're in Pennsylvania. I, d I don't know. But, Lord, just watch over them. In Jesus' name we all say amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to my mom. But I hope you all can have... Safe travels and have a good weekend. God bless. Okay, let me get in here. Get in here so they can see. All right. Praise God. Didn't he do so good? Oh, I'm about in tears over here. <laughs> Proud mama here. He done good for his first time. I am so happy. And thank y'all so much for bearing with him and helping him along and encouraging him. It's just, it's such a blessing. He, he has a passion for God, for Jesus, for everybody. He's constantly praying for everyone. Every time we're online, he's always making the list of, he's looking at all y'all in the chat and the attendees, and he's making a list, and he's like, Mom, I need to pray for them. Or when he hears y'all give your prayer requests, it just, it touches his heart, and he has to pray for y'all. He has a prayer journal that he uses every day, and it's, it warms my heart because if you had known this little man before, you, it would blow you away because he was mean. Let me tell you, very mischievous. Constantly stayed in trouble. We always had to talk to the principal. He was always getting 
in school suspension. He's he likes to be very popular. He does never he never meets a stranger, I tell you that. And he's a very social butterfly. So I know that the Lord's going to use that for good. The way that he talks to everybody, he he's going to use that to spread the gospel. And I would have never thought, and that's my ignorance, I suppose, <laughs> that, you know, I, I know that God can use anybody. I mean, look at Paul. He used Paul, and he was the worst of the worst, okay? And... But I am so proud of my Nathan. He's my baby. I have three children. I will introduce you to the other two here in a moment. Um, but I'm going to finish out here. And we thank y'all. He's he's running off. <laughs> okay. Here, adjust that. All right. All right, so we're going to finish up. All right. So I'm going to give a little bit of a word now from what the Lord's laid on my heart to finish out this sermon today. we still got about 30 more minutes, so I know I'm not as nice to look at as Nathan is. He's the cute, adorable one. So bear with me as well. Um, I'll give a word on what I've come up with of what the Lord's laid on my heart. And then we will do a salvation prayer. Anybody who's online that needs saving. Okay. Anybody who needs saving or who need prayer. And even afterwards, like I said, when we cut off the recording, we will continue to for a Q and A, or if you have anything personal that you want to discuss, we can talk about it, and it won't have to be recorded or anything. It can stay just amongst us church members or whatever you want to do. That's fine. So let's begin on my part, so I can quit rambling. Okay. So as he was talking about on the armor of God. You know, we still, he's right, we have to put on the armor of God. We're constantly going through a battle. As he was saying this morning, you know, Satan definitely was attacking us this morning. We got on here last night, set everything up, everything was working perfectly. I mean, it couldn't have went no smoother. But as soon as we got on today, of course, Satan had to start. Nothing wanted to work right. Sound, the headset, everything. This is a brand new headset. Just bought it from Amazon. So it should not be malfunctioning. But I know it's not the headset. I know it's the devil. Amen? So where we're going to begin is... Okay. Now I'm going to read my notes, so if you see me looking down, forgive me. I'll try to look up too. For a person to say that there is no spiritual warfare in life today believes a lie and that Satan and evil do not exist. You hear people every day that talks about, oh, well, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in the devil. What do you think's going on around you? We have evil all around us. We do still have good, but we also have evil. So, I mean, to say that there's nothing going on, they are those people are definitely blind, and they cannot see what's going on. And it breaks my heart. It really does. Each and every one of us were all born into an ongoing war that has been already won for us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a war between God and Satan. See, it's not necessarily us. This started in heaven between God and Satan. Satan got too big for his britches, thought that he could control God, control heaven. He wanted the throne. And that's when it began. And the Lord said, uh-uh, not happening. 
of course, not exactly those words I'm emphasizing, but you, you get it. Jesus defeated Satan and sin and death by dying on the cross of Calvary for us. The verse in Hebrews makes it very clear. And you know what? I forgot to read Hebrews. So let's, let me read Hebrews. It's Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Okay, yeah, that is the devil. My words are running together, sorry. Now, Satan has not surrendered. He never stops, let me tell you. And I'm sure y'all are well aware y'all have y'all's own things that y'all have to deal with daily. He is still actively going against God and is constantly at work using every sort of scheme and form of deception he can use in this world to snare those who love honor and worship God daily this is why we must put on the armor that Paul talks about in Ephesians as a permanent attire for as long as we live but be very aware that these battles will continue until Jesus returns and the final battle against Satan is fought and won. Amen. Amen. I look forward to that day when the Lord comes back. And oh, what a sight it will be. What a glorious day. But it's also going to be very sad for those who, don't, who do not have the Lord in their lives. And we need to pray for those people. Every one of them. And for those who had it and walked away from it, we really need to pray for them to come back. And from what I'm seeing, there's quite a few that are. I mean, you look and you see everything that's going on around you. You have so much evil, but you have so much other things going on. You have the hurricanes. You have the earthquakes. You have all these abortions. You have all these disasters. I mean, everything that we are going through right now is right here. Right here, playing out before our very eyes. How can we not see it? How can everybody else around us not see this? We, it's in our face every single day. It's on our televisions. It's, it's on the web. It's on the internet. It's in our children's schools. Look, don't even get me started on the schools, okay? Because that we will be on here for probably another three hours, and I'm not even going to go there. So y'all are very well aware. For those who are woke. And know the truth, you know what's going on. And it, it, it's horrible. The devil has, he, he doesn't even hide anymore. He's out in the open. And people still cannot see it. And I don't understand that. I really don't. It, it, it makes no sense to me. But I know the devil is good at what he does. And he is very good at blinding folks. And everybody is so desensitized. And the deception is so strong. I mean, there's the... I know Christians who are still being deceived. And it's heartbreaking. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And I'll get emotional if I continue. So bear with me. Oh, and I lost my place. Okay, but Paul warns us in Ephesians 6 that the day of evil will come to everyone and spiritual warfare will be faced by all who believe. 
okay? And that we must be fully prepared. Satan's main goal is to, is to defeat Christ's church, us. We're the church. He wants to destroy us. He wants to take away what God gave us. When Jesus died on that cross on Calvary, we received our salvation when, okay, he, he died. Now, don't, don't misinterpret my words here. Let me explain this better. <coughs> Excuse me. When Jesus died, he died for the whole world. He died for all our sins. Black, white. Asian, Mexican, Muslim, Catholics, Indians, all, there's no racism in Christ, okay? There's no this side and that side. When Jesus died, it was for all, okay? And when he died, it cleansed us of our sins. The day that we come to him and repent of our sins and accept him, for what he did and the bloodshed, that is when we receive salvation. Is when we repent and we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and our lives and it fully changes us. Okay, just as Nathan was saying earlier, you can't continue to do in the same sin over and over and over and expecting God to continually forgive when you're willfully sinning. There's a difference. Read it. Look it up. You cannot continue to live because if you continue, if you, say you give your life to Christ, say you're an alcoholic, you're drunkard, you're a beater, you're doing drugs, whatever the case may be, any kind of sin, okay? You ask God to forgive you, and then five minutes later, you go right back to doing what you were doing before. It don't work that way. When you get saved, Jesus cleanses all that from you. He takes it all away, the urges, the desires, all of it. Now, I will admit, when you first get saved, it can be a struggle. The devil's still right there. Just because you get saved does not mean that the devil is still not on your heels. He's still going to continue to tempt you. He's still going to continue to use his deceptions and his schemes and his temptations to get you to fall. And you can't. You need to be strong. Put on that armor, as Nathan was saying. Be strong in the Lord. And trust him. Trust what he can do for you. Okay? Now, Satan has several ways of deceptions and or temptations. For example, immoral acts. We see that everywhere. We see a lot of that on the streets. Okay? The immoral acts can be, say you go to Louisiana, during their parades, any kind of parades, gay, pri gay pride parades. You see the things that they do out there. And small children, the innocent, the children, that is hard. That is hard to watch. That our children are being indoctrinated. They are being pulled in to all this stuff. And again, we can go back to the schools. The things that they are showing, their sex ed education stuff, that with all these immoral acts and all these things, it's just, it's disgusting. And I refuse for my children to see that stuff. And we will be getting them in a Christian school. They go to a public school right now, but we will be pulling them out if God can help us on that. We also have false theology. You have fame. You have fortune. We have the false religions and all sorts of worldly enticements. He knows our weakness better than we do. And he will come at us hard in areas where he knows that we are weak and vulnerable. 
say you have addictions that you're trying to get rid of, that you're trying to get away from people, and those people are still coming at you. Hey, man, you want to come do this? Come on. You know you, know you like it. Mm -mm. God, God can take that away. But Satan, he will use every device possible, every human being possible to get to you. And we we got to be aware. We got to know what he's up to. So what Paul is trying to explain to us is to understand that spiritual warfare is real. And that no one, and absolutely no one, old, young, child, anybody, they are not exempt from the effects and chaos that it causes. God gives us answers through Paul on how to fight Satan. And I will give you these examples. Example number one. We are to be prepared and to put on the whole armor of God. Number two. We are to stand firm in what we believe, which is the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. Girding our loins with truth and his righteousness. The bell is the truth of the gospel. To defeat Satan, we must know the truth that's in God's word so that Satan's deceptions don't hinder us in battle. Okay? So, get in that word. Know what it says. Get the weapons that you need. It's full. The Bible is full of things that we can use to defeat Satan. And the main one is the Word of God. Number three, we need to be grounded in the Word. Ah, here we are. In order to stand firm in our faith that God is on our side. See, I forgot about that one. So, yes, I was right. The Word of God. Stand on it. Be grounded in it. Read it every single day. Make time. If you have time to sit there and watch some show or twiddle on your phone, make your little post, do whatever, it don't take long. Set aside a time to spend time with God in his word so that he can empower you, so that you can be filled with the ghost, so that you will know how to fight each and every day and have strength. Because I can tell you, my day does not start without a prayer. When I roll out of my bed every morning, my feet don't hit the floor first. My knees do. Okay? Because I know if I do not pray that day, you can bank on, I'm going to have a bad day. They're going to get on my nerves. They're going to do something. They're going to mess it all up or the devil's going to throw something at me. I'm going to be dropping everything. I'm going to be spilling stuff. I'm going to be burning stuff. I, I'm telling you, it, I'm not playing. I'm serious. It happens. If I wake up and I do not start my day in prayer, you can guarantee something's going to happen, at least to me. I don't know about y'all, but I can tell you it does with me. So that's why I have to renew my mind. I have to get that mindset to make sure that I pray because if not, it's going to be a bad day, and I don't want no bad day. I want a good day. <laughs> okay, so make time. Make time for God. In the morning. And the Bible also says pray without ceasing. Have a song in your heart. I'm constantly singing. I can't sing a lick. I, uh, no tune. <laughs> Believe me, I can't do it. But I do it for God. And I may do it in my head or in my heart. And I'm constantly praying throughout the day. Okay, so moving on. Y'all got it. Number four, we need to take up our shield of faith 
so to protect us from the fiery darts or flaming arrows of Satan. Just as the shields protected soldiers in Paul's day, Satan's arrows and or darts are the temptation Satan uses to attack us with. Number five, and I need to hurry along here because we're running out of time. Number five, we are also to wear the helmet of salvation. This is protection for the head. Satan tries everything he can to destroy what is in our minds and of the believer. The head is the major target in battle, and Satan does all that he can to destroy the believer's faith and assurance of salvation by attacking our minds with doubt. How many of y'all, and including myself, I've been through it, how many of y'all had those moments to where something has happened in your life or you've done something really bad and then that fleecing thought, thought through your mind comes in saying, you're not really saved. You just did that horrible thing. God can't forgive you for that. And, make, and, and the devil makes you doubt your salvation. Now, as we said before, you can't willfully sin. But God does forgive our sins. When we ask sincerely, when we sincerely come to him and pray and repent, God is just to forgive us. And he says it in his word. He will forgive us. But don't go out here willfully doing it. But don't let the devil attack you. Don't let him make you stumble. Don't let him cause you to doubt your faith. If you know you're saved and you know that you are doing everything in your power to live for God, one little mess up, it's not going to hurt you. Repent. Be sincere about it. God will forgive you. Turn away from that sin. Do everything in your power not to go back to that sin. You've learned your lesson, okay? You know what you did. You've dealt with it. God's dealt with you on it. You take care of it, and you're good. Ignore Satan. Just as he said, ignore him. Don't listen to his lies, because he will... Throw everything at you to deceive you. Number six. Then we are reminded to carry the sword of the spirit and to always pray at all times in spirit for leadership and for help as we all face each and every day in battle. God's word is more powerful than anything Satan can throw at us or of his weapons. And number seven. The key to winning battles that Satan brings our way, and here it is, is to repent of our sins, seek God's forgiveness, and to open our hearts to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? For he says he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come unto the Father but by him. By Jesus Christ. Okay? That's the only way that we're going to get there. Repent, believe, and enjoy the ride. Because it's coming. Now, I believe that's it on that word. Uh, we are going to close out today. And I hope y'all could understand me. A lot of people say I have a deep accent or country or whatever. So I hope y'all could understand the words I was speaking. So if not, please forgive me. Um, let's see. Where are we at? There was something else I wanted to touch on right quick before we got off of here. Okay, yeah, here's one. When we're talking about the people not believing, we can go to Psalms 14.1, and real quick, I'll read. It says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. 
they have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were only, if, excuse me, if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread? and call not upon the Lord. They were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. They, excuse me, ye have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his pe people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Amen. All right. And one more. And we got a couple minutes. Proverbs 3, 110 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That will mess us up. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health <coughs> excuse me, to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with all thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Praise God. I love those verses. They mean so much to me, along with others. Another one would be Philippians 4.13. That helped me when I first got saved. It... <laughs> I can't even tell you. I, I'm another time. I'll give you my testimony, and I'll tell you how all that works. Okay. Now, uh, if anybody wants to come on, and if you have something you want to say, or if you have a prayer that you want to share openly online live, if not, we can do it after the recording. That's fine. But. Before we close out, I do want to I want to do an altar call for those who are watching and for those who have the Lord in your life, please pray for those who don't. They need our prayer, our love. We have so many loved ones that we care about who don't know the word of God and those who may have heard of the word of God but reject it. I myself have a few of those. So I'm going to explain here, and I've got this written out here. For those of you who are lost, who feel like that there's no way to escape whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're in, let me tell you, there is. If you only knew my story, and if you could listen to everybody else's story, you would know. It's God. God can change it. He can take it all away, let me tell you. It, see, I can, I can, maybe I need to tell my testimony. I keep wanting to revert back to it. I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit trying to push me to tell, but I, all I know is that I was deep in sin, drinking, partying, fornicating, you name it. I was just about to do it. I never did the drugs. I never did the drugs. The most I did was smoke cigarettes 
and that was socially, and it's nasty. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's nasty. And, you know, God took all that away instantly. I was also in a deep depression. I became suicidal, and that was a very deep, dark place. But thank God I was saved that day. The Lord saved me. I would like to say... I would like to say the day that I tried to hurt myself, that I instantly got saved. It was two years, two years after that, when I got saved. But that was the beginning. God showed me when that person helped me and stopped me from what I was doing, which was Michael, my partner, my spouse. It... I don't want to cry because it, it's very emotional. Whew. It was the beginning of God showing me who he was, that he was there with me. And that started the path to get to where I needed to be. And for my children, they were babies when that happened. There's so much that went on. And I had posted my testimony on Facebook, and it was more like a book. I mean, it went on and on. I had to do it in different sections about once a week because it was so long of everything I went through. But I felt like I had to get it out there. I had to tell everything that went on in my life because I felt like somebody out there was going through the exact same thing and needed the help. So I just I, I laid it all out there. I was ashamed, but it helped many people. And I had many people comment and send me emails on that testimony so praise God it reached some people and it helped those who were going through the same thing I went through and here I am I'm nobody <laughs> I'm, I'm just a mom trying to take care of my family run a household and serving God the best way that I know how so if you're going through anything come to Jesus pray it's, I can guarantee you it would be the best decision you ever made in your entire life. And if God can save me, he could save anybody. And I'm sure there's a lot of you who can say the same thing. I'm sure you gave your testimony and told everybody, hey, if he could save somebody like me. We all, <laughs> we've all been there. We all know. We know what it is. So... If you're sitting there and you're wondering, how can I be saved? You can say the prayer of salvation. And when you decide that you want to get right with God and go to heaven when you die. For the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Also, Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3.16, the first verse we were ever taught when we were children. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who, whosoever, anybody, believes, in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And John fourteen six says, And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So the way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. So what must you do to be saved? We must believe that Jesus died for our sins and that he arose from the grave. We must ask Jesus to Jesus to forgive us of our sins and we must accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. When you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, then you seek to make good decisions based on the Bible, which is God's holy word. Now, I know I've went over time, so I need to wrap it up here. So let's let's say the prayer, okay? For those who want to get saved, just reach out your hand to the Lord and we'll pray. For the prayer of salvation, dear Heavenly Father, repeat after me. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus paid for my sins on the cross. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I ask you to forgive me and I repent of my sins. And those who are lost that need to rededicate, you can do this as well. All the one known, excuse me, forgive me of my sins, all the ones known and unknown. I ask you to wash me, cleanse me from all sin, and enter into my heart and my life. I put my faith and trust in Jesus as my only hope for living eternally with you in heaven. I ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I want to live my life for Jesus Christ. I understand that my salvation is not based on my works, but on the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ooh, I feel the ghost now. <laughs> I'm getting chills. Oh, I pray somebody gets saved. And I'm praying that those who watch this broadcast afterwards, this sermon or whatever you want to call it, this teaching, I pray that when they watch it that they get saved too. It's been a blessing. I enjoy it. We, I, I can't even describe. Thank, I thank Pastor Carter for this opportunity. I thank y'all for bearing with me today. And I'm sorry I went over. I'm a woman. We talk sometimes. I think that's stereotyping, though. Yeah, men will say that, but I don't believe it. I've got one in there that talks constantly to anybody. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to close out in prayer, and then we're going to stop the recording. So I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming on and joining us today. And hopefully Pastor Carter will be back next Sunday. I believe he is. And then we will go on with, do what? You have a word? Okay, never mind. I thought he had something he had to say. All right, but anyway, we're going to close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before your throne, Father, and we thank you for this day. Lord, We for it is the day that you made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us today to give your word and to share our testimonies and anything that we had, Lord, that you laid on our hearts. Father, I pray that you be with this online church and those who are watching, Lord, and those who will watch afterwards, Father, that you will penetrate their hearts, Lord, and help them, Lord, with the understanding and apply to their lives, Lord, that you'll be with them and you'll equip them, Father, with the weapons that they need and to put on that armor, God, so that they can face the devil and they can have strength, Lord, to face each and every day. Lord, we pray for those who are in sickness, Lord. We pray that you lay a healing touch on them and be with them and give them strength, guidance, and peace, and comfort, and anything that they need, Father. Lord, I pray that you be with my family and help us, Lord, as we get through the rest of this day. Be with those who are traveling. Help them to get through their day as well, Lord. We thank you and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. God bless. It's been a pleasure, and maybe we'll see y'all next time. Love y'all. Bye.